Welcome back students to MicroStakes Poker University. This is Danks. We are going to be reviewing a hand played by Eric Person and Andy on Hustler Casino Live. But first, please like and subscribe the channel. We'd really appreciate your support. Join us on Discord. Link will be down below. And uh, let's get right into the hand. a thousand chance every time you lose a two hundred thousand dollar bet if you yell at someone enough they'll give it back you should just do it every time i'm gonna go ahead and let the hand play out i'll talk a little bit about it as it goes on but we'll go into a little deeper after the hand is played that might be more scary i don't know so they're playing 100, 200, 400 with the 400 big blind ante. So this is a pretty big game here. Three blinds. Andy raises um, to 1.4 in the hijack, gets two callers, and then Eric three bets to 11.4K with pocket eights. We're going to see a big pot here. Eric here has three bet squeeze with pocket eights. Andy is going to four bet, drive everybody else out behind with the ace king of diamonds. You know what I'm going to do, Andy? I'll tell you in a moment. But I already know. Rip has ace ten of hearts here. I can't tell you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I'm gonna call and check. And Eric's gonna call. Yeah, I'm let you go first. Rip folds and Eric goes ahead and calls the four bet. <laughs> and they check check. Check in the dark, both players. So they're gonna go straight to the turn. Wow, and it would have been an action flop. We're going to see four cards diamonds against an open straight drop. So four cards, uh, a la the Sammy Farha, Jamie Goldhand from High Stakes Poker like 15 years ago. I right, check. Check. And Eric's going to check again. <coughs> with the open-ended straight draw. Andy here with two over cards and the nut flush draw. <clears throat> 35,000 from Andy here. I raised to 135. And Eric is going to check raise here to 135,000. 200, 270. 270 left. Plus, yeah. So Andy's getting just under two and a half to one. I got a one stack of hundreds. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Five, five, four. Ten, ten. And Andy and Eric, and they're go. deep. Three hundred and thirty-three thousand. Starting this hand, they have about a thousand big blinds deep. This oddly played hand. Line check, check on the flop. Here we go to the river. And the river's a five. And Eric here has the check mark the question is <coughs> will he get to showdown it looks like he thinks he probably needs to bluff here let's see check check and andy just checks behind andy just checks behind oh. <laughs> all right so let's go back to the beginning here and uh, we'll just start it over and we'll kind of go in and talk a little bit about what's going on here and uh, how it's played out. So, <clears throat> three blinds, of course, two, four, one, two, four, <clears throat> hundred. Andy in the hijack, it folds to him with ace king of diamonds. And this is an obvious open here. Um, he makes it 1.4k 
And in the small blind, this is just not something you want to be doing here. Uh, there's two players to act behind you. With king nine offsuit, this is just a fold always in small blind. So uh, right away, this is a mistake. He's just going to, a lot of times, he's going to get three bet out of the pot. So we need to be folding king nine off here. King nine suited, maybe could go for a squeeze. Um, but still from the small blind, it's kind of weak. So might even be folding that. And as you can see, Rip has ace 10 in the big blind. So already king nine is just completely dominated by both hands that are in the, the, in the hand already. Uh, now Rip in the big blind, he just calls. Now, when you have a, a raise in front of you and you have one player left to act behind you, with a hand like ace 10 suited, you want to be doing a lot more squeezing or folding uh, in this type of situation. Calling leaves it open for the last person to act behind you to squeeze. They're so incentivized to squeeze in this type of position, especially if they wake up with any type of hand like Eric does have here. So um, personally, you know, it could go either way. Uh, as far as rips concerned, ace 10 suited, folding or raising. Um, <clears throat> I probably would go for the raise route, uh, given how aggressive this table is. But we do know that Andy, he does play premiums. He's a very good player. Um, so I could see the reasoning behind him calling. However, I think a squeeze would be better played here than just a call. Now, Eric has pocket eights in the third blind, and he three bets it to uh, ten, 10 times. So 10x the raise from Andy. And obviously, Ryosuke is going to have to fold. Shouldn't have been in there anyways. Rip now <clears throat> is put in the spot, just like I said. He's got somebody behind him. They three bet. Now he's in a spot where he he obviously, he, I mean, a lot of recreational players might just call this off, but most players should not against a four bet. Uh, since Andy four bet, we should be letting this go 100% of the time if we're rip, and that's what he does. Now, with Eric's squeeze, I actually don't hate it. Um Pocket eights could complete in the third blind. Um, go ahead and set mine. But squeezing isn't terrible either. He does turn up the heat here. And then Andy, of course, just quickly four bets. So this kind of starts to scream strength here from Andy's side. He's got... <clears throat> he's raised. He's got a flat collar in the small blind. A three bet in the third blind. I mean, a flat collar in the big blind and the small blind, a three bet from Eric with eights. And now he's got ace king suited. Of course, he's going to four bet. Uh, Rip, he goes ahead and lets it go. <coughs> and that's just an easy fold. Now, Eric calling here, he, I think for the price, he could definitely feel that he's up against the type of hand that Andy does have. So he does have, a, you know, a 65% advantage at this point, which um, I think due to some of the card removal because of the ace uh, being folded from, um, from um, Rip. So he's definitely got more advantage here in equity. Now, the call against the 4-bet, you know, Eric's a very aggressive player. A lot of players would just be folding this out. But, um, you know, pocket 8s is not a terrible hand. Typically against a 4-bet, though, we most likely want to be letting it go. But in a game with this much action, and uh, Eric has been playing with Andy um, quite some time, so he might be able to post play and post-flop and take the hand uh, away from him. Or just outflop him in general. So I don't absolutely hate the call, but this is probably just a fold in theory. <clears throat> and it goes check, check. Now, 
I kind of wanted to touch quickly on this. Um, typically in a four bet pot, what would happen is the out of position player would be checking and the in position player should be betting something like 25%, uh, pretty much with entire range, especially with a board of this type of texture where he's got the nut flush draw on two overs. Um, but it does go check, check. Now, Eric, uh, naturally would be checking anyways. So checking dark, uh, it, it's not, you know, it's, it's somewhat common in the live game about, uh, the out of position player, just because they're going to be checking anyway. So they'll just go ahead and check dark. Now the check behind, um, in the dark from Andy, I'm not quite sure why he did that. Um, <clears throat> Maybe it's for pot control. I'm I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Maybe you can let us know in the comments down below why you think Andy checked dark there. I would personally never be checking dark in a four bet pot um, <laughs> before the flop comes out. But let me know what you think. Four cards, diamonds against an open -ended straight draw. So Eric has an open ended straight draw, and uh, Andy has two overs in the nut flush draw. Sammy Farha, Jamie Goldhand from High Stakes Poker like 15 years ago. <clears throat> and Eric's gonna check Eric checks, and I believe Andy here. He's just gonna go ahead and try to um, semi bluff the pot. He might think he's actually good here, but this range does favor this board. The range advantage does favor Eric much more than it does Andy. Uh, Eric could have all the nines, all the tens. Um, I mean, I don't know if he would have any suited tens, like suited nine ten, suited. King 10, Queen 10. I mean, Eric's pretty aggressive. So he could be in there. Excuse me. He could be in there with a lot of these hands. So stabbing here. I mean, I might actually just go for a check again on the turn if I were Andy here. Um, but he does have lots of equity in his mind. He doesn't know that he's behind here yet. But he does ha have, you know, his draw. So I don't hate the bet. Uh, as far as the sizing goes... Uh, into a pot of 63,000. He bets 35,000, about half pot. I think the sizing isn't terrible. Uh, I'd probably rather him go a little bit smaller as uh, just for pot control because this board, like I said, smashes Eric's range so much. So more oftentimes than not, he's either going to get check raised or he's going to get a call pretty much all of the time. And being that he's behind here, I'd probably try to see the river card for a little cheaper than 35k. I would bet something closer to 20. <clears throat> I raised to 135. Sure enough, Eric. Yeah, Eric check raises a hundred thousand dollars more, so he makes it almost. He makes it 5x. 4x a little a little more than 4x so now this puts andy in the blender here and this is this is the problem with betting so large you know half pot he calls there's really not much you can do here they're so deep and this pot has gotten so big now after eric raises um, but he does have to be wondering like, wow, what does Eric have here? Did he flop a set of tens, a set of nines? I don't see him having a straight, uh, Jack eight suited or Jack eight off or six, eight just doesn't seem like in the wheelhouse of Eric playing a four bet pot out of position. So I think Eric, I mean, Andy is pretty much looking to hit a flush here. Uh, he might think he's not good at this point. Um, so he's looking for a flush card. If an ace or a king comes, I would be curious to see what, how he plays it. If Eric does show aggression. They both miss, but Eric has the best hand. Now, Eric, he's got to be wondering, do I have enough showdown value to just check and get to see a um, showdown? Now, if Eric bets here... This is a pure, it would be a pure bluff, right? Because he's not going to be called by anything that's worse than him. So the only thing he would be doing is getting ace-king to fold out. So if he were to bet, uh, 
and wanted to get a hand like Ace King to call if for some reason he just had a he knew that he was good here I would bet something like five percent pot to get a crying call out of Ace King but I think checking is uh you know probably the play here because he's got showdown value and if he knows that Andy has Ace King then Andy also has showdown value so he might be able to just get the showdown for free um not quite sure what Eric would do if Andy blasts on the river. <clears throat> the problem with betting, if you're Eric, is if you get, sh if you bet and you get raised, you have to fold. Um, and the problem with Andy betting here is that. Basically, he's going to have to put his whole stack at risk because he's got a, a one size pot, one pot size bet left. So if Eric does have a monster, he's going to call. Um, but as we can see the hand, Andy, he could definitely get away from, he could definitely get away with an all in jam here. And I would like to see it. But unfortunately, Andy checks back and Eric, of course, is good. And Eric is somewhat surprised, probably, but played that hand very, very well. I'm actually impressed with the way Eric put that together. Um, I think maybe calling the pre-flop four bet is a little on the loose side, but, you know, in this type of game, on this lineup, you want to get invited back to the game. You want to create some action, and you want to be playing in a lot of pots, you know, sometimes with speculative hands, but... He does a great job. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we'll catch you again on the next one. Until next time, peace.